There was an old saying taught to medical students, fat burns in the flame of carbohydrate. Then this guy, Chris Voigt, or Vaught, decided to go on an all-potato diet for 60 days just to show that it was safe to eat potatoes. And he wound up sort of unexpectedly losing 21 pounds even though he says he was eating 2,200 calories of potatoes a day. And so an interesting question is, is this possible? And so I searched the literature for other examples of ad lib diets that were very, very low fat diets um, where people were not purposefully restricting calories. They were just trying to eliminate as much fat as possible. And believe it or not, there are extraordinarily few examples of this kind of diet in the literature. This one is from the 80s, and it was done in Denmark. And the goal of this was not to lose weight. The goal of this was actually to reduce cholesterol. And they were down to 9.5% of calories from fat over those first three months. And in those first three months, the average patient went from about 186 pounds to about 167 pounds. And what I like about this study is that it's a single intervention study. People were not told to change uh, their drinking habits, their smoking habits. They weren't told to exercise more. They weren't told to reduce calories. It was just swap out as much fat as possible for carbs, nor was the goal of the trial to lose weight. So I talk a lot about on my blog and on these series about something called reductive stress. And what that means is a buildup of electrons in your cells. And electrons are really just extra energy from your food. Where does the cell store those? Well, it stores those as NADH. So NADH is the reduced version of NAD+, which you've probably heard of. NAD+, is the limiting factor and how fast your metabolism goes because the Krebs cycle needs three NAD plus. The Krebs cycle is how you burn fat and carbs and the Krebs cycle needs three NAD plus to go around the cycle and to burn and to burn those calories. And so this study is really brilliant. This is uh, called acute carbohydrate overfeeding. They brought in normal weight and overweight volunteers. And what they're going to do is they're going to feed them a whole bunch of carbs. And so the customers come in, or the subjects come in, I suppose, and at time zero, they start eating bagels. And then over the first, so these are minutes, so over the first two hours, they have to consume 336 grams of carbohydrate. And, and they, they start with bagels, and then they drink this uh, glucose drink. As, as you go up on this axis, it means you're burning more glucose. And if you're lower on this axis, it means you're burning more fat. If you look back at the lean and obese humans, at time zero, the lean humans, as soon as they start eating these bagels, boom, you see this big jump in the amount of glucose that they're oxidizing. Uh, that does not happen in the overweight subjects. The overweight subjects are completely flat for the first half an hour. And remember, they're trying to get to 336 grams of carbohydrates. So they're, you know, they're stuffing their faces with bagels and nothing happens for half an hour in the obese. And as time goes on, um, the lean, the lean volunteers continue to burn more and more and more and more glucose compared to their overweight counterparts. And so we can say that the difference between lean and obese humans is that the lean humans are better able to burn glucose, right? So now this is that same experiment, but instead of looking at respiratory quotient, instead of looking at what they're burning, um, we're looking at the, the reductive stress in the mitochondria. As these lines move up, higher on this vertical axis means you have more NAD plus in your mitochondria, the open circles are, are lean volunteers and the, and the dark circles are overweight volunteers. The lean volunteers, who we saw in the previous graph, start to oxidize the glucose right away. They have a spike in the ratio of NAD plus to NADH. By an hour into this, even the overweight volunteers have started to increase their glucose burning. And when their glucose burning increases, their levels of NAD plus increase. And NAD plus is the limiting factor in how fast your metabolic rate goes. So burning glucose increases the ratio of NAD plus to NADH. Our fat and carbs, we convert to acetyl-CoA. 
They go into the Krebs cycle. The Krebs cycle requires NAD plus to make NADH and it burps off CO2. And so this paper, pyruvate dehydrogenase complex and NNT uh, constitute an energy consuming redox circuit. So what does that mean? What, py what is pyruvate dehydrogenase complex? When glucose comes into our cells, it goes through this process called glycolysis and it gets converted to pyruvate. The pyruvate dehydrogenase complex is the enzyme complex that is the limiting factor in converting pyruvate to acetyl-CoA. So if pyruvate dehydrogenase complex levels are low, we can't burn glucose, right? So obese people have low levels of pyruvate dehydrogenase complex activity, and that's why when they start eating bagels, they don't immediately get a jump in NAD+. So where does the NAD plus come from? Pyruvate dehydrogenase complex converts pyruvate to acetyl-CoA. It uses an NAD plus over here. And that NAD plus gets, uh, it, it, the pyruvate dehydrogenase gives the electron to NAD plus, converting it to NADH over here. Those electrons move through the electron transport chain and they come back down over here. And that's how we generate ATP is by NAD plus moving that electron up through the mitochondria. However, if NAD plus levels are low, what the pyruvate dehydrogenase can do is instead of giving those electrons from pyruvate to NAD plus, it can give them to oxygen and it can create hydrogen peroxide. And hydrogen peroxide goes through our antioxidant system and it loops around through NNT and it comes back down as NAD+. And so pyruvate dehydrogenase is generating its own NAD+, and it is allowing our metabolism to roll forward. What would happen to your metabolic rate if you consumed massive amounts of carbohydrates for several days? And the answer is... Uh, your metabolic rate would rise pretty dramatically. And in fact, this experiment has been replicated dozens of times. They had people eat 50% in excess of their normal uh, maintenance calories. Uh, everybody did the, the high carb for a while, and then there's a washout period, and then you do the high fat. And so after a week of doing this on the high carb diet, people's metabolic rate increased by almost 300 calories a day, right? Because they're generating NAD+. But conversely, when they consume the high-fat diets, even though they're eating massive amount of calories, it's not really pushing up their metabolic rate. This is another experiment. In this one, they, they do this washout, uh, very high-fat, very low-carb, pretty low-calorie diet for three or four days before they start to increase carbs. Their metabolic rate is right here. It's about 2,400 calories a day. And then here's where their, uh, where their calories go. So then they start eating 3,500 on the first day. Then they jump it up to like 42 or 4,300 for three days. And then on the last day, they're consuming nearly 5,000. The last three days, they're consuming nearly 5,000 calories. And this is huge amounts of glucose starch and what happens is every day, literally every day, that they're overfeeding the starch, their metabolic rate is going up and up and up and up. So by the last day in the calorimeter on the 5,000 calories of starch diet, um, their metabolic rate has increased by 900 calories versus the uh, high fat, low carb, low energy diet that they were on for three or four days before they got into the calorimeter. And then they go to this, again, to the protein sparing modified fast. So now they start fasting, right? They go to nothing and their metabolic rate goes right back down.